Hey guys, this is Coderjeet, your best friend in programming and today I'm going to talk about C-sharp coding conventions. I think programming using proper standardized conventions is very important and this is something that I teach all my new team members as soon as they join my company. Why is it so important? Well, you know programming is a team sport. You will work on a project and then very soon either somebody else or your future self will need to maintain and extend that code. Now, if you write the code in a predictable standard format, it will be easier for your friend or your future self to make sense of things and get results. But if you don't do that, a lot of time will be lost in just trying to make sense of things. So make it a habit to code using good practices and be a programmer that people will love working with. If you don't do it, everyone will hate your guts and will never want to work with you. Now that the message is very clear, let's take a look at some common conventions. And by the way, this can differ a little with different companies, different organizations. And this is what we practice. If you do this a little differently, it's okay as long as it's still standardized. We've got an empty ASP.NET Pages project over here. Let's use this to see the convention in action. I'll create a new folder and let's call it model. And we will create a new class called employee. Here we go. And for our first convention, all class files must have the same name as the class. Example, if you have a class named employee, put it in a file called employee.cs. And that's exactly what we've done here. We've got a public class over here called employee and it is in a file called employee.cs and the second rule to remember is to use a separate file for each class you declare. Now C sharp lets you have multiple classes in the same file. So if I for example had needed a class called salary like this one, I can potentially declare it in the employee.cs file or file named anything but I should not. You should have one file for each class. And if it is a partial class, that is a class that is for some reason spread over multiple files, that's okay. You can name the files employee, employee01 and so on. But mostly you should have one file for one class. Convention number three, all class names must be in Pascal case. When you name a variable or a property or a class using Pascal case, the first letter will be capital and then the first letter of each subsequent word will also be capital. In this particular class, we have only one word, employee, so only the E is capital. Now, if I wanted to name this class something else like employee data, then I would make the, the D of data also capital. So this is Pascal case. The first letter of each word is to be capitalized and that's how you should name your classes. Next. All constant names should be fully capital. For example, if you have a constant called company name, the constant name should be fully capital. This is the convention to declare a constant and that is how people should be able to identify just looking at the variable wherever you use it in the code subsequently that this is a constant. So capitalize the constant name and as you can see, separate it separate the different words in the constant name using the underscore character all the local variables declared in the class should be named in camel case with an underscore that is you should have an underscore in front of them like this private int employee count as you can see this is camel case but to identify that this variable is local to the entire class we put an underscore in front of it. In camel case, the first letter of the first word is lowercase. And then subsequently, each word that follows will have a capitalized first letter. So it looks like the hump of a camel. Now, this is what camel case is named for. But if you think about Pascal case, this coding convention is from an older language, which was a very popular language called Pascal. And that's how variables or classes were named in that language. That's why that has been carried over. And if you name objects or classes using that convention, it's called Pascal case. 
all the public properties that you declare in the class should be named in Pascal case. For example, if I had a property called employee name, this is how I should name it. It's Pascal case. This property is public, which means it can be accessed not just inside the class, but outside the class too. Then if you got a function, the name must be in Pascal case and the function name should start with get. I have a function here, get employee code. As you can see, this is Pascal case. The first letter of each word is capital and this has the prefix get. This will identify this clearly as a function. So when you're coding and you see the function name in IntelliSense, you will immediately know that this is a function and it will return a value. If you declare a local variable inside the function or a method, it should be in camel case. And now we can return employee code. The methods in your class should be in Pascal case and should be named after what they do. Parameters passed to a method or a function should be in camel case. Like here we have name of person. By the way, what is a method? A method is a function that does not return anything. It can do something, but it will not return a value. So it is a void type function in C sharp. If you declare an interface, it should always start with the letter I. So an interface will be called I something. Example, this one is I employee and an interface can have various methods and functions and all of them will follow the Pascal case naming convention. Also, if you have a function that checks a condition, it should start with is and return a boolean. We have a function called is employee working which checks whether a person is working or not. It is a boolean function which means it will return either a true or a false and in that case the function name should start with is. We should also talk about the sequencing of the file. How is each element to be sequenced? So the first thing we need to do in a class is place constants at the top of the file. So whenever you declare a constant, it should be right near the top. So if you got any subclasses or interfaces, they will go above it. But below that, declare all your constants. If you got multiple constants, they should go together. Next, place the local variables. These are the local variables to the class. They are private variables and they should go next after the constant. And then you should place the properties. So if you got public properties, they go next after the local variables. And of course, you got to group them together. Don't put things in a random order. For example, a property there, a private variable here, then another property, then a constant. That's not the way things should be done. You have to organize things in logical groups. Constants go together, local variables go together, all the public properties, they go together too. Then you got to put in the constructor. So if you got a class, you might often have a constructor. So just have the constructor over here. Next. If you got multiple constructors, maybe accepting different values, put them in a sequence. The generic constructor goes at the top and then if you got multiple values, put them below the generic constructor. Next. All the methods and functions they go so if you got any methods and functions they can follow and now you can do things in a more random order that is you don't need to alphabetically sort them it's okay to have them one after another but make sure that you put in one line of empty space between each function or method declaration so I don't write my code like this there should be one and exactly one line of empty space between each method or function name. Now one more thing, if you got any collection in the class, it should be named in plural. All collection should have a plural name. So that's it for our style and conventions guide. If you follow these conventions and you standardize them, you make sure that you do them every single time, your coding will be cleaner and when you get back to the code months or even years later, you will find it easier to get started and get things done. Your team members will like you better because your code will be understandable and they will be able to deal with it. So if you like yourself and you like to be a good team player, make sure that you follow the conventions. This is Code Ajit, your best friend in programming, signing off. 
and if you like this video if this was of help to you don't forget to like and subscribe and keep watching my channel for more videos on programming